What's more, millet's advantage over rice is its higher nutritional value. All these millets are rich in vitamins, minerals and also folic acid. The folic acid is very, uh, very essential for uh, younger children, uh, especially under three years old. But scientists are aware of a major drawback. It's very labor intensive. Now she's pounding, she's going for pounding now. Traditionally she had been doing this and she's a older lady. But in the younger generation, especially young girls, they do, don't prefer, well, no longer they want to do the same. A lot of work involved in these millets. For pounding this amount, they take about half an hour for completely pounding this. Scientists realize that asking farmers to grow millet for their own good is not enough. They must sell it for cash too. That's the dilemma, you see. We can't be just evangelists and tell them, if tapioca gets some more money, then they are, they are poor. They want to have a little more money. Not only money, but I should market. That is why, you know, uh, Swaminathan Foundation, especially with reference to this particular issue, the creating an economic stake in conservation is very, very important. We want the farmer, instead of selling his raw harvest at a low rate, want to enhance its value by various processing methods for which we are supplying them various machineries. We are giving them capacity, increase the capacity for processing them, train them for this particular thing, and then we have created a market linkage for them so that they can bring out their own entrepreneurship and enhance it. Agricultural scientists in Bangalore are busy developing millet varieties to make them more disease resistant and to give them greater yields. We have developed the production technology, but we are trying to fine tune it, keeping the objective of minimizing the cost, enhancing the productivity, you know, so that the farmers is benefited by growing this crop. Experts complain that millet lacks investment. Institutional support is required eh, for uh, production of new varieties and uh, develop new production packages and also plant protection packages. See what is happening, you know, the rice and the wheat, we have, they have been in the public distribution system, PDS system is there. But the similar, the force is not there for these millet crops. The force is in the public distribution system. It's a network of government shops where people can buy subsidized rice, but not millet. More than 98% of the people of India, they eat rice and wheat. And it has been so for centuries. So if the government wants to have a food security for its citizens, then wheat and rice have to be given prime importance. So therefore, uh, wheat and rice is subsidized both for the farmer who grows it and for the consumer who eats it. We recommended that the food security basket, the public distribution system, should be enlarged. Not only wheat and rice, but all the millets. If it is Kolli Hills area or the Namakkal as we see them, that public distribution system should include all these grains. Right now, for what are known as coarse grains like millet and maize, the open market price levels are far above the minimum support price levels. It is not true that we neglect millet and other coarse grains. It is just that they don't, as of now, because of market price conditions, need our support. So the, the bitter orange is just in this uh, um, little orchard. Back in Italy, Isabella Dalla Ragioni has been searching for forgotten varieties of fruit. Today she's found a rare bitter orange in a mountain village. She believes that the secret to preserving old varieties is to create markets. At present, these bitter oranges are only grown in small quantities, and for her, this is a problem. The problem is that the small farmers, they are old people. They have problem to sell products. 
they have problem to be in the market, in the big market, because of course the big market wants a lot, a big quantity of products. So they live only with the local market, with the small markets. Molecular analysis could help these varieties in the future. At nearby Perugia University, molecular biologists are helping to preserve and develop some of the fruit that Isabella finds. We did the molecular analysis with Isabella's apples because she collected some material and then we wanted to check if those materials were the same varieties or were different varieties. And in doing that, we also added some other apples just to look for markers that could discriminate her variety or her varieties from the commercial ones. Genetic identification could allow old varieties to be crossbred and improved by adding traits. This would make them easier to cultivate and sell commercially. Of course, I know that is uh, a dream for us to keep this kind of agriculture. But we need, because in the other way, we, we lose everything. And I don't know if it's uh, a, a price that we want to pay. Back in the Collie Hills, Oliver King is talking to another cassava farmer who is not sure he wants to pay the price. நீங்க வந்து இதுல வந்து பணம் உங்களுக்கு கிடைக்குது இல்லையா இதுக்கு ரொம்ப முக்கியம் நினைக்கிறீங்க நீங்க பணம் என்ன செலவு காலமுலையா வேற என்ன மை செல் ஹி சேஸ் and for the construction of his home, getting rice from the uh, public distribution system and also for the festival time, you know, he requests a lot of money. That is why he prefers this crop. He says people are saying all these uh, nutritious crops like finger millets are very important, very nutritious. That is why I am also thinking of cultivating some of the grains at my land. He is also looking for a, the alternative system, especially millets, because the day by day the nutrition in the soil is depleting now, because they have been cultivating for about 10 years. So now the productivity in the tapioca is also declining now. So that's the important uh, message he is uh, delivering to us. Some farmers are on their way to creating a market for millet. New local machines are producing refined millet that can be sold and eaten. They say that uh, because grinding is easier now, they can grow more millets and uh, they can uh, use this machine for their uh, um, for making uh, malt as well as uh, ragi powder and they can regularly take uh, millet food in their homes. Uh, they are consuming themselves a small amount uh, and then there is material they are selling it in the supermarkets and uh, through the supermarkets they uh, make profit. Collie Hill's millet products are now selling in 34 stores in the region. By weight, sales have increased 300% to two tons in 2007. It seems people are beginning to hear about the benefits of millet. She says that this is the product of the Collie Hill's farmers. She knows that it earlier and she says that she selects this product because it's very organic for her uh, children. She says that yes, she will continue to buy these products. It is new to the market, but it is available in the olden days. It is good for the development of the children. It is good for the growth of the children. 
it is more energy content. Mixing the minor crops into the major farming system could be the future for food locally and globally. The success or failure of this venture still hangs in the balance. We're now awakening to the idea that food is actually very important and the way we grow food, process food, consume food and the range of species that we eat is actually very, very important to us. And I think in the next generation this will become one of the major issues. These grains are going to be important. Everybody is becoming, the rich people are becoming health conscious. There are more diabetics in India than any other country. Therefore, your crops have a great future. Don't abandon them.